Hello everyone, welcome to our pre-calculus pre-recording video. This is for our quiz 4 revision and this is actually a practice paper. So this video will be relatively a short video because in this uh, video we'll discuss, uh, we'll just briefly go over all the questions here. Then you will have some time to give a try to practice this maths, to find out the answers, to find out the solutions of this maths. Then later, uh, I will also will again send you all the work, uh, answers and everything about this paper. But uh, this will go as a homework also. So uh, you first give a try and uh, send your working in our Google form. I will we will give you like some homework format also, so that you can upload your working in the Google form. This is just to ensure that you all are practicing the maths. Just that there is no other. There is no other alternative uh, aim or goal for that. This practice work is just to ensure that you all are practicing. That's it. So you can just uh, send the send your working. Even if uh, we send you the answers, uh, the solutions uh, before the deadline of the homework, still you will have to send the. You can say, sir, you already sent us the answers. So what the what the use of sending the answer to you again? So that's not the case actually you are not sending me the answer you will just send you the working you're working like you have done the rough work etc etc uh, just to make sure that you all are working anyway so this is the quiz date uh, november 29 uh, monday this monday and uh, the plan is tentatively during the class time as like just like our previous quizzes these are the agenda so we have uh, eight topics here that means uh, you know we usually ask uh, seven questions and you will have to answer best we will take the best five so we have here eight topics eight diff different topics so even if all of them uh, we want to integrate uh, still maybe one of them will be left out at least one of them will be left out and also there is always possibility of uh, getting surprises as usual <clears throat> so first question is about mean median mode and quartile some data's data is given so for this data you will have to find out like uh, sort the data from least to greatest and find the range so like you will write the which one is the lowest then little bit bigger little bit bigger little bit bigger that way this is called ascending order okay so first you will have to order it then find out the range the formula for finding the range is highest value minus lowest value that will give us the range mean uh, median and mode from this data so mean is actually we'll have to take the arithmetic every arithmetic mean here basically add all the numbers and divide it by number of numbers okay add all the number and divide it by number of numbers for median the rule is uh, we will have to look at the arrange data mid value of the arrange data is the median if there are two values in the middle then we will have to take their average then mode mode is the maximum occurring data in a data sets that is the mode the data which comes most of the times or maximum amount of the times uh, that is called the mode C number question is interquartile range from the data. So uh, to find out the interquartile range, we will have to find out quartile 3 and quartile 1. Interquartile range is quartile 3 minus quartile 1. So that will be the interquartile range. Okay, the value of quartile 3 minus the value of the quartile 1, whatever you get, that is the answer. Interquartile range, and you can use the formula for finding the quartile that we discussed uh, in the class. Yeah. Question number two is sample population and variables. Which one is population? Which one is sample here? Of course, you can see there are a larger number of uh, uh, given dots here. So some of the dots are chosen from this from this uh, given representation here some of the dots are chosen here so it is clear that these are the sample because these are just selected some uh, some dots and here we have all the dots so all the dots means all the population that's the population and selected means it's a sample 
you choose something this and this to examine that is your sample but everything there is the population discuss with an example with example discuss qu quantitative and qualitative variable we can actually change this question and say that not discuss we can say that define quantitative and qualitative variable with example that means you will tell what is quantitative and what is qualitative variables and give let's say two or one or three examples one two three in any number one example is also fine okay examples of quantitative and qualitative variable uh, if you want the want what is the answer actually in our previous slides you have the answer of this question and this question uh, in one slide with example uh, differentiate discrete and uh, continuous variable same thing goes about this uh, question uh, this one also you can look our previous uh, previous class slides for the answers if you want uh, hopefully you already know it by now if not then you can just review it reading bar diagram stem leaf and pie diagram so as we said uh, in the exam in in the normal exam like when the classes are physical then we actually uh, tell the students to draw this kind of bar diagram and other diagrams but in the online setup just to make the class and make the exam interactive we actually will give you this thing uh, and then we will tell you um, will tell you to find out some information extract the information or analyze the information from the given diagram the reason is this is little tough for the students due to different capacity issues and uh, uh, different different thing at the time um, uh, draw the figure upload it when the exam is running uh, in auto proctor etc etc so all these things actually will be little um, little bit uh, uh, difficult for the students and in some cases somewhat impossible those who are using just only one device for the whole purpose so this will be difficult so that's why uh, this is the arrangement we have some bar diagram here let's say bar diagram says extract the data extract the data means how many people are watching the or how for how many people their favorite movie is comedy answer is four so you write comedy four people action this is five so action five people like that drama one okay this is a pie diagram uh, in this pie diagram uh, this is given like a total consumed food is 800 grams then the question is vegetable is eaten is how much so vegetable is this color that means 14 14 percent so uh, this is a little bit tricky let me show you let's say if this question is this color bread I think right suppose if this question is about the bread then what is the answer then we'll say that we'll, we can see that total is 800 grams so we can say that 100% equals to 800 100% equals to 800 equals to 800 then the question is 14% suppose this is I'm not solving this question I'm saying if the question is about bread this question is about vegetable if the question is about bread then you will have to use the percentage of bread here so 14 percent equals to what so you will write 800 into 14 divided by 100 then you do the cancellation here and here you will find the answer uh, just in the next line for the bread okay because total is 800 then 14 equals to what total means 100 percent this entire figure this entire figure is 100 percent total means 100 percent that means here we have the total 800 grams in all the categories together okay so this way we understand it this is stem and leaf uh, diagram this is very easy how to extract the data so see this is four written here and some numbers basically it means that before all of this number you will have to write 4 that means it is 44 let me show you 44 
46 6 before 4 so 46 then 7 after this 4 so let's say after it will be 4 7 then 4 9 notice that interestingly for the 5 there is nothing here so we will not have to write for the 5 anything then we have 6 so it will become what 63 then 6 4 64 then 6 6 66 this way all the way around up until 106 106 10 and 6 that means 106 this is how we 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 can extract the data from here now let's say just for fun uh, if we ask you what is the mode of all this data so which number comes the most of the time for this data i'll have to also check this is 40 this is 8 8 so two times here 2 2 two times here so it will be 68 and 72 they will be mode okay because this number comes you if you write all of them you will see that the 68 comes twice 72 comes twice all other number comes one time only so this way we can actually go deeper this way what is the mode this is the question that we said about this first we can extract the data we can just write the data and then we can find out if there is anything additional here we can find this maths actually this math you have seen actually this is um, uh, exact, uh, directly taken from one of our slide two sets of data are given and once for one set mean and standard deviation is given for another set you will have to find out the mean uh, standard deviation and the variance and you know if you can find out the variance is square root of variance equals to standard deviation or if you can find out the standard deviation then square if you multiply the whole square the standard deviation then you get the variance then compare the data distribution in terms of their mean and standard deviation let's say you can you can you can of course you will find out the mean here mean here and the standard deviation and standard deviation for both case and then what do you understand from your standard deviation and mean that thing you will have to discuss just one sentence or two sentences is fine but if you want to extend no problem but if as i said if you can uh, uh, tell the main thing in one word uh, or in one sentence uh, then it's, it's fine what is the shortest uh, then we can explain yeah i think in two words uh, this is tough but in two words we can actually also explain that is the lowest but yeah in sentences uh, in sentences yeah in yeah, it, it depends on number of sentences uh, that you want to use okay okay let me give you a hint you can talk about if their mean is different you can say the mean is for the data a mean is this for the data b mean is that if it is same you can say both of them are same then you can say that for data a standard deviation is this for data b standard deviation is this and it means that data a or b is very scattered because of the standard deviation value is this that is the reason so this way you can explain it symmetric and skewed graph so you have two graphs here which graph is symmetric which graph is skewed you can actually just look at this this is of course symmetric and when some data is this is actually right is skewed as you can see right side is bigger if the data is right is skewed as you know mean is in the right side mode is all always the highest line is the mode this line will be the always mode so the other line is the so other line is the median here extension that's why for the for the following figure find out the symmetry and skewness this one also symmetry or skewness this is actually bimodal data there is two modes one mode here and one mode here so it is called bimodal and then we'll have to look at which one is skewed which type in which side it is skewed 
Question number uh, six is from the histogram. So two histograms are given here. Like these are the these are the students' homework out of out of ten. So how many students get how much score? This is the point. Suppose four gets one student get four, five one another student get five, then six. Two students, no, one, two, three. Three students gets six. Okay, so this is the data. This way you can extract the data from the from the figure. This is one, two, three. Each of the line represents one. One, two, three, four, five, six. That means this this line, this bar is up until here. It means seven student, uh, seven is the marks for six students. In other words, six students get uh, six students get uh, seven. Each of them uh, seven. And this is actually written here also. There are six students who score seven out of ten. This is also similar. So just the data are different. So first of all, uh, we'll find out the individual score for histogram two, like how many people get six, how many people get seven, how many people get eight, etc., etc. That is the individual score. Find the mode for histogram one and two. So uh, to find out the mode, you can just find out the ex find out the data, then just look at the just look at the which one which number comes the most of the time. This is one way. Another way is just you can look at the which which bar is biggest basically then you will know the you will know what happened then you will know the mode and for finding the mean and median as you know you will you need the data so first of all from the figure you will have to write all the data then just uh, can do the calculations to find out the mean and median then compare the histogram data uh, histogram data like uh, distribution data distribution symmetry mean median or mode so you can talk about is this data is symmetric is this data is not symmetric uh, or what is their mean, what is their median, what is this and that. You can see from this figure if you draw a um, data distribution curve then actually you see that this one is almost uh, already you can see is it symmetric or not. Then if you draw a curve here see is it uh, skewed then if it is skewed is it right is skewed or left is skewed you can actually uh, tell. So here uh, for the C number we will have to compare it in terms of this and this and that. One thing is important here, you will not have to analyze all the points. You will just can pick any one point and in terms of that you can analyze the data, no problem, okay. Just one, any, any one of the points uh, you can pick and then uh, talk about the uh, analysis. But uh, try to pick the points which is like uh, which shows their differences, not the similarity. Always differences are better. Dot plot. So you see all of these are like some data distrib distribution system. This is statistics are used to compare some uh, sometimes identity of the authors. The, uh, the following dot plot shows the sample random, uh, simple uh, random sample that compares the later counts of two authors. So let's say some one author, uh, Davy, uh, this guy writes some passage, some paragraph. So from that paragraph, uh, we have found that most of the time, uh, this Davy he writes three word containing uh, three. This is three letters com containing words, letter counts. So so three letters, letter three. How many times? One, two, three, four, five. So five times Davy wrote in that paragraph, five times he wrote three letter words, okay? Four letter words is two times. One letter is, one letter is just two times. Two letter is one time in that particular sentence or paragraph. So just, just to give you an example, like it will be like one, 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 two times. It means that then two, the two one time then three one two three four five times so three 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 then four four okay 
So these are the Davies letter count and this is how we can extract the data. So this data is actually given here in a picture. Okay, this data is given. Same thing goes for goes for Marie's letter count. So we can extract the data if we want from this from here and here. Yeah, I thought that uh, we'll make uh, my plan was to make uh, this video short, but it is already uh, already big. But I think uh, it's helpful. Anyway, find the data set for the Marie and uh, latest count and Davis later count. So similarly, like the Davis later count, we can actually find out Marie's later count also. Like two, then three, three, then four, four, four. Then we can write all of them. Once you extract the data, then finding mean, median, and mode is again the same. Okay, just the same rule you can apply everywhere. What you need? You need the data. So, from where you can get the data? From this given uh, figure. This is actually a dot plot. This is called uh, dot plot. This is another one, is another one is. Um, stem and leaf because they give you a dot actually they gave you a cross so we could give you a dot also okay so they will mean the same thing but we should not call it cross plot okay yeah I just remembered a funny joke that's why about this let me tell you the joke I think some of you already know that. So one time I taught one of my students like right angle triangle. So I said that, okay, this is right angle triangle. If one angle is 90 degree, then this is called right angle triangle. This is uh, uh, perpendicular to each other and this and this. Then I said, this is the hypotenuse. This is one side, this is another side, etc., etc. After explaining all these things, then I said, I thought that, okay, I should test the student. Then I have drawn the figure. I had drawn the figure like in the opposite order, like this way, and asked, "What is okay? What is this uh, triangle?" And then the student said, "Okay, sir, this is right angle. So this must be left angle, <laughs> left angle triangle." Okay, so uh, this is kind of that kind of thing. Anyway, still that uh, that is still that is. That is funny. Slightly. So, uh, describe any pattern that you notice between the shape, uh, shape, shape, and the measure of the measure of the center. Discuss the, about the mean, median, and mode. Like you can say that okay, the, the mean of this guy is here, or median of this person is this or that. That kind of thing you can discuss uh, in between these two persons later count. Hmm. You can see actually one thing uh, obvious that is this Davy actually uses most of in his we can say that in Davy's writing he uses small small words because see most of the words are like maximum three letter words and maximum four letter words and most of the time three letter words but here Maria is actually Maria is actually using uh, very big big words like six letter word three times eight letter word so basically very big letter so you can actually compare this way also even if you want to skip uh, writing all of them or you can talk about uh, after finding the mean median this and that also you can find out you will not have to copy me of course and that's not a good idea so some of the box plots are given here what is the what is the median and range you can see the median is here like in between 12 and 14 so you can see this is the median range means highest minus lowest so highest is 21 lowest is 3 so you can find out the range then these are the scores of uh, students in two tests like test 1 and test 2 and you can see that both of the tests, the lowest mark is 3 and the highest mark is uh, 21 for both of the tests. But in the test 2, most of the students actually scored 9 or above. This is called 75% of the students actually scored more than 
uh, nine or more than nine. Okay, and uh, that exact same bar is here for the test one. So here, actually, uh, seventy-five percent of the students scored six or more than six in the test one. Here it is nine or more than nine. That means test two is better. Uh, was better actually. Most of the students scored higher marks here because their marks is in the highest side. In the highest side, this is twenty-five student, and here you have twenty-five per stu twenty-five student just only here. That means most of the students their score is low in the uh, in the test in the test one. Not most of the students, uh, like larger number of students. That's the appropriate word word here. So, uh, which test is better? Test two is definitely better for the students because they scored higher here. If I ask what is the quartile one, so quartile one for test one is six, quartile uh, three is sixteen, for quarter uh, test two quartile one is nine, quartile two is sixteen, uh, quartile three is sixteen, and for both of them, quart this is the median twelve quartile two. Okay, I actually answered to some degree all the questions here. But uh, you can uh, arrange your uh, way of writing, and that's all for this video. Thank you all. Thank you very much. And I think uh, from this discussion, you will be able to answer uh, at least, uh, I mean, a lot of questions. Let's say 90 to 95 percent, uh, you got the hint of answering. For other things, you can just uh, refresh your memory or use the previous slides, etc., etc., for finding the answers. All right. And thank you all, thank you very much. Have a good day, everyone, and see you. Bye bye. I'll come back with uh, with the solution video, of course. So this is this paper. All right. So thank you very much. Have a good day, everyone.